It's the start of a new year and a lot of us, me included, I'm not above any of this. We want to look at our year and really optimize it. New Year's resolutions, I hate actually talking about them, but it's part of life. There is something to do with that end of something and the start of something else. A clear slate, a clean slate. You might have to buff your slate, you might have to polish your slate, you might have to renovate your slate, but the start of a year can bring in a fresh start. And we're going to talk about it today. I'm going to go through and look at this thing about goals. I did call the episode, Make Goals Not Wishes, because a lot of the time we wish we could do something, we wish we could be something. We wish we could have something. We wish we could be with somebody. We wish that life would be better. But as you'll hear, we don't want wishes. We want rock solid goals and I'm going to help you. I'll talk about what goals are and what goals are not. I'll share the secret to achieving anything you want to achieve. Trust me, this is the biggest secret that I ever, ever, ever learned when it comes to setting goals and achieving things in life. And it's not download the book, The Secret and Manifest, and I might speak about manifesting later in the episode at the very, very end, uh, because I might get into some trouble. I'll give you some examples of goals and how to plan for them. I'll share what to do if you don't have a goal. And guess what? It's okay if you don't have a goal. I'll also read some of your goals from the Facebook group and see if we can put a bit of a plan together with some live examples. And finally, I'll talk about the risks associated with goals and any potential downsides that we may need to consider. Before we get into today's episode, we can't do our Tuesday episodes without Sphere Home Loans. It's a new year. I need you to look at your mortgage. When was the last time it was reviewed? If you don't have a mortgage broker, you can reach out to Sphere Home Loans and speak to one of their quality mortgage brokers. They've got a team that can help listeners all around Australia and you'll be in such great hands. And if you are looking at buying your first home this year and you need to speak to a broker or your first investment property, they've also got people within the business that specialize in first home buying, investment lending, refinancing, that's Sphere Home Loans. And we thank you so much, Sphere, for getting behind my millennial money. Rightio, I want to first start with some key definitions. Have you ever debated somebody and they're like, well, what do you think about... I was listening to a podcast recently and they were talking, they were kind of debating around all the stuff that's happening in the Middle East and and someone said, oh, are you a Zionist or do you think Zionists should be this or that and what do you think about this and free speech and all that stuff? And at the start of the debate, um, the person that was being interviewed actually said, well, let's just first stop and agree on what you mean by Zionist, okay? And this is completely unrelevant to the podcast topic today. But what they did, they're like, well, we need to both agree on the word and the definition first. And in in that light, let's have a look at these two definitions. So the definition of wish is feel or express a strong desire or hope for something that cannot or probably will not happen. The definition of goal, the object of a person's ambition or effort, an aim or desired result. So if you've got a goal and in the Facebook group, a lot of people were saying that they wanted to create an emergency fund. Okay. So what would you rather? Would you rather in relation to your emergency fund, just express a strong desire or hope for it? to happen and it probably can't or will not happen or when it comes to your emergency fund an emergency fund is my ambition it is my effort i will aim and i'll get a desired result so when it comes to your emergency fund when it comes to insert your goal here i want you to be really clear on the fact that we want goals not wishes and what this will do this will really help you filter out the chaff, get to the wheat, and it will really help you with distractions because as long as we're wishing, there is nothing in concrete. When we have a goal, we will get actionable steps in concrete that we can follow. So just on that, 
Goals are intentional, wishes are not. Goals are targeted, wishes are aloof. Goals can be achieved, wishes are left to chance. Goals have a plan, wishes daydream. Goals are for adults, wishes are for children. Mm, there's a few, uh, few awkward squirms out there right now. Goals prioritize and have order, wishes live in chaos. Goals are realistic, wishes are fantasies. So let's just put some real life meat to those statements. I wish to be an investor one day. What about we change that to, it's my goal to start investing in 2024. I wish to be debt free. We'll change that to, it's my goal to be out of debt by the end of 2024. I wish I could buy my first house. I have a goal that will bring me a house within three years. I wish I could start my own business. My goal this year is to start a side hustle and at least get one person that can pay for my services. Win behaviors, win the goals. Win systems, win the goals. Win habits, win the goals. Win distractions, win the goals. Win communication in your relationships win the goals. So I alluded at the start to what I think is the absolute secret when it comes to achieving your goals. And I can honestly say every time I've ever done this in my life, I've got the desired outcome. Now, this isn't uh, magical. It's not weird. It's, I think, almost physics. Some of you might understand where I'm heading with this, but I can tell you right now, starting my business, saving for my first home, saving for an investment property, building the podcast business to what it is today. Everything I've ever done, I've put through this lens. You want to know the secret? Here it is. The true secret to success is understanding cause and effect. That's All you have to do, every single thing that you want to happen in your life, every single thing that you want to achieve, every goal, cause and effect. I'm not talking about wishes because wishes do not have any substance. It's fine. I wish I had an Aston Martin DB12. It's awesome. It's fun. It's radical. I wish I had a $20 million luxury yacht. I wish I had... My dream house that was sandstone, internal walls, architecturally designed. So that stuff there, for me, I'm okay for them to sit up in the wishes category because it's it's nice to dream and it's nice to have these things that I don't know, like I don't want this to be so clinical where you can't dream and have some fantasies in your life. Like I always fantasize, I jump on carsales.com and I like look at my Aston Martin DB12. Although I must say, uh, the new Bentley uh, Coupe, it has got my fantasy wish ticking a bit. Might be, you know, fantasizing about that. But I'm not here to say don't have fantasies. I'm not here to have not have wishes. I'm just saying if you actually want something to be done in your life, turn that wish into a goal and understand cause and effect. And trust me, with a matter of time, and we will layer through some uh, practical steps in relation to our goals because we want the goals to be realistic and actually happen. And I'll get into that whole smart goal thing if you haven't heard it for a while or if it is new to you, I'll, I'll do that a bit later on. But honestly, cause and effect. I could probably end the podcast now and say, Every single thing you want in your life, plan it out, materialize the steps, cause and effect. What do you do to make something happen? Well, here's an example. You could say, I wish to have homegrown lemons. Hmm, that's out there in fantasy land. Like, yeah, it'd be nice to have a lemon tree. Let's change that. My goal is to have a flourishing lemon tree in my backyard by next season because my favorite dessert is lemon meringue pie. It could be a favorite dessert because your nan made it when you were growing up, or you love lemon and it's just been that thing. 
for me, to be real, it's uh, I love rhubarb because my nan grew that growing up and used to have rhubarb and cream and ice cream. But we need to now use the cause and effect principle to turn this goal into reality. And then what we'll do is uh, look at some things that can happen along the way. And I want you to think about when I'm going through this example, your current goal, because we don't have wishes anymore. And, and this is the thing on that wish thing. I could, if I really wanted to, turn the wish of an Aston Martin DV9 into a goal and do the step this way. It might have a longer time horizon, but honestly, I'm happy for it to be a wish. I'm, I'm like... I actually don't want a car of that value and all that at this stage of my life and whether I ever do or not, it's, I'm happy for it to be a fantasy because, you know, John Mayer, uh, modern day philosopher, his song, Something's Missing, uh, it was really cool and I would encourage you to listen to that song. He basically said he, he got everything that he wanted. He had everything, but there was still something missing. Uh, so I'm okay with not ever having everything that I want. And I want you to think about that. You say that you want to retire early. Do you? Having all the money in the world, would that solve your problems? And I was thinking this morning as I was driving along, you think of a heap of successful people. And the ones I was thinking of, uh, Melanie Perkins, who was the co-founder of Canva. You know, a billionaire. Okay, so we'll write down Mel. People call her Mel. Her friends call her Mel. Hi, Melanie. I know you're a big listener of the podcast. Not really. Probably not. Uh, <laughs> let's have a look. Uh, Taylor Swift. Let's write down Justin Bieber. Let's write down an actor. I recently saw that Christopher Nolan movie at the end of last year. Um, the Nuclear One, whatever it was called. Total mind blank. Everyone's shouting it. Um, Oppenheimer, that's the one. So we'll even write Christopher Nolan down. Uh, we'll write that, um, the main actor's name down, which is Cillian Murphy or Killian. I don't even know. It's, it's Irish, Irish, whatever. Cillian Murphy, uh, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, so there's a heap of well-known people. And if you've heard of somebody, generally speaking, if you've heard that person's name, they, a lot of the time, would have a decent amount of money. So if you're really famous for the good things, most of the time you'd have a lot of money. Now, I'm not talking about the person who was just on Love Island, you know, there's, or, you know, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here and all that rubbish. I'm, I'm talking about business leaders. I'm talking about people who are really successful in the arts. So all this to say, if I write down all these names, Melanie, Taylor, Justin, Christopher Nolan, uh, the main dude, Cillian or Chili, <laughs> whatever, uh, Robert Downey Jr. So all these people have so much money, right? They could stop working tomorrow. They could invest all their money in equities, in commercial real estate, industrial real estate, in residential real estate, uh, in businesses, and they could probably have enough money that would come in the door each week, each month, each year to fund their life so they don't have to ever work ever, ever, ever again. Emily Blunt was also in that movie. I got it in front of me. But the thing is, and this is why I just really want to harp on this, it's okay to have wishes and not get everything, is because you still need purpose. You still need to actually do something. And by need, I mean want. Because all these people, like why is Christopher Nolan still working? He's got probably more money than God. Think of any musician. Why is Taylor Swift still out there working? She doesn't have to. Why is Justin Bieber out there working? Why is Melanie Perkins still going into Canva office at Surrey Hills a few times a week and being a CEO? Now, I've been told she works a bit from home. Why are they doing that? They've got all the money. Aha, uh -huh, money isn't your problem. It helps to a point, but you still need purpose. You still need a reason to get up of a morning because if you don't, 
you end up writing the song Something's Missing, as John Mayer did, modern day philosopher. So that's kind of a bit of a, a starting thought point for what I want your goals to be. It's okay to have fantasies. It's okay to have wishes. I don't think you want everything fulfilled in your life because you'll end up wrecking your life. It's gone a bit cold out there, hasn't it? So going back to my goal is to have a flourishing lemon tree in my backyard by next season because my favorite dessert is lemon meringue pie. So what we've done, we've broken this down over four weeks because life's busy and we can't just go click our fingers in four weeks, it's done, right? And part of this whole exercise with making goals is to get a pen and paper. I need you to get off your phone, off your laptop, at least in the first instance, get pen and paper because you need to get stuff out into the open. And guess what? Paper and pen is real. It's tangible. It means something. But texts, emails, all that stuff. So, for example, if you said to somebody, sh shot them a text message, hey, I think you're awesome. Thanks so much for the encouragement. Sure, they've received that. They liked it. If you actually wrote that on a card and posted that card, it's physical, it's out in the open, it is real, and sent that to them, it's probably a 10 times impact because you've got it out, out of the screens, out of system order, <laughs> like it's real. Things are real, right? So I need you to get a pen and paper. And again, the whole purpose of this, I'm not your guru, I'm just facilitating a conversation and I, and, and you're going to do the work. So many people are like, oh, thank Glenn for the podcast. Because of the podcast, I've done this, I've done that. Awesome. Guess what? I didn't do that. It was all you. I was just here, your swimming coach, walking down beside the pool while you're swimming. I'm telling you, yep, keep going, keep flipping or whatever swimming coaches do. I am your coach. You're doing all the work. I'm just going, ah, 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 or jump a little bit higher and faster and... When I get out of my money area, my knowledge of anything really falls apart. So we're going to break this down and here's some examples. Week one, we want this lemon tree. We're first just going to research the conditions that suit a lemon tree. If we're in a climate or in a location that is just all rock and we can't actually plant a tree, well, it's going to be a non-starter. We're also going to research not only the the conditions that suit a lemon tree, but the yard, how is the aspect of the yard? Are we north facing, south facing? We just want to get some real life data on the table. And you might do this over the first couple of weeks. General rule of thumb, the bigger the goal, the more time it will take, the more research that we'll need to take. So in the first week, because life's busy, we you know, I'm laying on the lounge, I'm on my phone, I'm just researching lemon trees, I'm getting a vibe. You know what? Yep. I think I can. I think I can get a lemon tree happening. So I've researched. The second week, I've got to prepare my garden bed and yard. Maybe there's an old garden bed. I need to get out there with my spade, with my shovel. I'm preparing that. And you know, life's busy. You've got maybe kids' sports, you're running around can't do everything at once so we're just breaking it down we're preparing the yard we are just preparing we might be i don't know putting a new garden in place if it's just a yard we're going to dig and prepare the yard and the garden bed i'm not a gardener so go with me so you've done that next week because it was a busy weekend i only got 20 minutes out in the yard the next week week three well i've got my research i've prepared my garden bed now i need to go to the big green shed I need to buy organic soil for the garden bed. Now, just on this, because we've done our research and we've prepared our garden bed, in the first couple of weeks, it could cost $25 for the organic soil matter that you're going to get in bags to prepare the garden bed for your uh, seedlings or your pre-planted tree in a uh, pot plant. And the reason we are also using this time to prepare is because if there is a cost involved, we can't just go, yeah, I want to plant a lemon tree. I'm going down to the big green shed. We need to save some money for, your, for our goal before we kind of start to pull the trigger. 
And that's why it's so important to break it all up and to put a plan in place. Wild, right? And this is the thing. With this day and age, everything's instant. Everything's now. I want food. Click, click, click. Knock, knock, knock. Here's your food. Because everything is like, oh, I wonder during the Roman Empire, <laughs> everyone's so it's all, I think it's, uh, I'm not actually one of those guys that always think of the Roman Empire, but well, maybe I am. Maybe, well, maybe I am. Uh, oh, I wonder like how long it took to build the Colosseum. Hmm. Oh, well, I'll just find out. Like everything is Googleable at the moment. And the problem is with the instant society that we live in, there are basic laws that things take time. Wild. So we go to the big green shed, we buy the soil, we buy the lemon seeds or a plea or a pre-planted tree. Now, the reason I've kind of talked about buying the pre-planted tree, as much as technology is fast and instant, with some of our goals, we could leapfrog our goals. You know, if you're starting a business, oh, well, I need to build a website from scratch. I'm like, we'll just get Squarespace. Like, we use Squarespace, whatever. There are things in our financial life, in our goal life and all that, where if we are smart and strategic, we can skip a whole heap of time and still do things right. So if I bought the pre-planted tree in a pot that was a lemon tree, I could leapfrog, I don't know how long it takes to grow lemon trees, but I could leapfrog two months, three months, right? But we still have to do all the other stuff. We still have to prepare the groundwork. We still have to research the conditions. So we've been to the big green shed. We've got our seedlings or tree or whatnot. So the next kind of step or the next week it's to actually plant the bastard, get it in, get this thing happening and water it as per the instructions on the box of the lemon tree box. So what I've just done is shown you to get that lemon tree. And I know it's really simple, but I'm doing this partly for me because I need to hear this too. To get that lemon tree in 12 months time, I've just had to unpack the steps and make the causes and do the things that would make a lemon tree appear in my backyard. So with our goals, there are going to be ongoing goal maintenance things. So the first thing with our lemon tree is we've got to be patient. We've done all the right steps. Now we need to be patient. We need to tend to the surrounding soil. We need to weed it. We need to make sure everything's good. We need to maybe prune the tree as per the instructions on the box of the lemon tree and all that stuff. But basically, all the hard work is now done. You'll find with your goals, the research will take the longest, the um, setting up maybe a plan will take the longest. You know, once you do all these first steps, you just then got to let time do its thing. All the hard work is done. So I'm going to say it again. Do the actions that will cause the desired outcome. I reckon that is the biggest secret in life. It's the biggest secret that I've ever used when it comes to every financial goal in my life, every business goal in my life, every relationship goal in my life. Well, let, and again, I've got no idea how to be married because I'm not married. But what if someone in the Facebook group says they want to cultivate stronger relationships? Well, I want a really fulfilled marriage and I don't want to lose it. I want to fight for this marriage and all that. Okay, well, what does a successful married couple, quote unquote, do, whatever that looks like? Oh, hang on. They do weekends away once a quarter. They do kid-free nights once a month. They actually talk about their feelings. They do annual counseling together. They put their phone away when they go out for dinner or at breakfast at a cafe. And sure, I know that people have kids and young kids and all that and we can't get away. That's fine. This is an example. Don't crucify me for using examples. Use these examples to fit them into your thing and into your life. So I would hypothesize that a successful marriage and relationship would be if I think my spouse or partner is amazing at doing X, Y, and Z, I'll verbally tell them or I'll write them a note. I don't know, I'm going to steer back away from that stuff, but you vibe me, you need to do the things that causes the success and the goal that you want in your life. 
pretty simple. It's so simple, actually. It's dumb. And this is why I talked about at the start. You win the behavior, you win the goal. You win the habit, you win the goal. You win the systems and the processes, you win the goal. So wild, right? Why is this so easy? And why can't we do this? Because we're basically dumb humans and we get stuck in habits and behaviors. So a question to you for this year, what dumb habits and what dumb behaviors can you get rid of? Forget all this goal crap. Absolutely, forget it all. If you did one thing and you're like, I'm just going to write a list of the five habits or the five or the four or the three or the one thing that it has not served me well in the last year and just get rid of that. That will improve your life. And you might, before you even worry about setting goals, you might review your life first and actually write down the things that didn't work for you in 2023. And then under each one, try and think of a few reasons as to why it didn't work. So for me, last year, uh, towards the end of the last year, my lower back got a bit stiff and a bit sore. Hmm, okay. How, why did that happen towards the end of the year? I know why. I stopped going to Pilates. Overseas, I got quote unquote busy, then fractured my ribs. <laughs> so this month, January, guess what? I'm going back to Pilates because cause and effect. I want Glenn to not have a sore and stiff lower back. So he goes to Pilates once a week. Oh my gosh, groundbreaking podcasting right here. So when it comes to risk with goals, I really believe, you know, if we, we look at the lemon tree example, the risk technically is in week four when we're actually planting the seeds. When you're about to pull that trigger, it might even be, you know, before you go to the big green shed and spend $100 on soil and gardeny things and a new hose and watering can and all that stuff. It's only a perceived risk if you fixated on the actual execution and didn't plan it out correctly. If you are getting close to the execution part, you really actually need to decide if you actually want this lemon tree. And the reason I say this is once we take that risk, it's like pulling the trigger. A lot of the times, there might not be any turning back if you take the risk and I quit my job and I'm starting my own business with the lemon tree the risk. I go to the big green shed, I buy all this stuff. Nah, I don't want to do this anymore. Well, you've just wasted money. Might not be able to take that soil back if it's been in your garage for two weeks and it's got, I don't know, worms or some other crap in it. I don't know. But once the foundations are in place, even with long-term goals, right, there is minimal maintenance. So what I'm getting at is it's important to really understand that the bigger goal means the more focused that you need to be and the more clear and sure that you are. Because if you're only renting, you know, this, you're renting a house and you wanted to plant a lemon tree, would it serve you if you're planning in two years' time? What if you were not that serious about it and after the first year you, you got the tree and then you just didn't look after it? So all those sunk costs have been wasted. And sunk costs always need to be thought through with all our pursuits. Because sometimes we have the option not to sink those costs if we aren't serious about it. And basically what sunk costs are, in kind of a business or an investment sense, you invest the money, you spend the money, and you can never recover those costs. They are sunken. So with my dumb lemon tree analogy, the sunk costs are, I spent all that time researching. Sure, I might be willing to sink those costs because I'm working out if this is a legitimate goal. And, and when you are working out the causes that you need to do to make the effect that you want, you may, through that process, work out that I'm not actually prepared to sink these costs in order to get this goal because it doesn't 100% align with me. And that's why it's so important to get things out onto paper. The sunk costs, the research, the yard work, that's time in the yard can't get the time back once we sink that time into our goal we might pay for stuff with our money that we can't resell you might buy the lemon tree get it home oh i can't bloody sell it i can't take it back or whatever end up giving it away on marketplace the sunk costs always need to be thought about 
and particularly before you press go, the sunk costs comes into the whole risk spectrum. So remember the risk of something is the actual execution. And just on this, uh, if you are looking at sorting out your career this year or a new job, uh, in our book, Sort Your Career Out and Make More Money, I did a whole chapter on risk taking and I talk about risk being the execution part. And the more you plan and the more you organize and put your ducks in a row, the risk actually gets lower because you've done all the hard stuff. So in our mind, we all, and I'll say it again, in our mind, we always fear risk because that is the execution part. So how do we, you know, before we jump, how do we put as many pads around the floor as possible to minimize that risk? And that's what the planning uh, is. So the sunk cost is a risk. And once you press go on the execution, you might be committing things that are sunk costs that's a waste of your time and energy. So, And I just want to let you know that on the 1st, I think on the 5th of February and the f- kind of the first full week of February, uh, this podcast name is changing and there'll be a new name, new logo, new color. So the words My Millennial Money will not appear. Um, all the shows in our network that have the words My Millennial um, they're getting renamed. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to click resubscribe. If you're listening to this uh, today and you're not a millennial, that is totally fine. One of the reasons why we are renaming is to make um, it more inclusive for newer people who want to do better with their money. Our Facebook group has people of all ages. We've got 16, 17, 18 year olds listening to this podcast. Got people in their twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, and seventies that listen to this podcast. So if you don't already subscribe to this channel, click follow, click subscribe. If you love what you're hearing or you're being really encouraged, uh, can I please encourage you to forward this to a friend or family member and say, "Hey, I know you're not a millennial, but uh, you'll get value out of this." The name is changing next month, so don't think it's just for millennials. Um, it's going to be an awesome year this year. So uh, the first full week of February the name of this channel will change. You don't have to, uh, if you just subscribe to this, you don't have to do anything. You'll just see the new name and the new colors and all that pop up uh, in your feed. So thank you so much for being part of the podcast. So I was thinking, so what are the reasons that goals don't work? Well, here's what I reckon. They are not realistic. They are not yours. There's no emotional attachment. You're not actually serious about doing it. Maybe your goal's in the wrong order. Too big, it's too soon, it's too ridiculous. Maybe your partner is not on board with you and your goals. And I'll, I'll talk about um, being in a relationship and partners uh, in a moment. But the main reason goals do not work is because it's a wish. I wish I could do something. There's no plan attached to any wish. So many of you have wanted to get out of debt for so long, but you've never put a goal in place. You've never put a plan in place. It's just been a wish. So many of you have wanted to save uh, to get your first home to live in for five years, but it's never been a goal. It's never been a plan. It's always been a wish. You haven't put any action behind that. A lot of you listening may have wanted to start your own business four years ago. You, You just haven't been serious enough to put a plan, to put a goal, put some purpose behind that. Is it easy to achieve greatness? No. Is it worth it? Yes. So I've kind of broken down one, two, three, four, five main areas uh, that you might want to set goals uh, for this year. And I honestly think we get our pen and paper and we write down these five columns or these five pages, even if it's a page per section. So the first section is finances and you can put whatever order you want, I don't care. The next section is health. The next section is relationships. The next section is work. And the next section is lifestyle and kind of in brackets in my notes here under lifestyle, I've put like recreation, hobbies, maybe you want to work on your mindset, you might want to work on your spirituality, you might want to work on your environmental footprint, you might want to work on your charitable pursuits or um, you want to get more involved with uh, XYZ community group. So the lifestyle is kind of the catch all. So what I really would encourage you to do 
uh, finances, health, relationships, work, lifestyle. If you can think, yeah, stuff, lifestyle, I'm just going to put mindset or environmental footprint. I don't care. The thing is that you you kind of get five pages out. Then what I want you to do is write down as many kind of goals that you can think of under each of those pages. So finances might be get out of debt, get an emergency fund, start investing, um, save up for a new car, save up for a holiday, automate my savings, um, whatever that is. Health, I want to lose this 10 kilos. I want to get fit. I want to be able to run a half marathon. I want to be able to cycle to work. I want to be able to do that. Relationships, I want to do this, 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 that, 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 that. I want to work. I want to get a pay rise. I want to get um, a new job. I want to get a new career. Lifestyle, I want to learn knitting. I want to uh, not buy water out of plastic bottles in 2024, environmental footprint. Every time I book a plane ticket, I'm going to pay the $1 for whatever reason and they can put that to the tree fund. I want to start donating some time to a charity. I just want you to get as many things out as possible. And then what I want you to do in each of those five pages, I want you to put an order next to them, like a one, two, three, four, five. So just literally order them. So finances, if you've put, I want to start investing, I want to get out of debt, I want to uh, buy a new car, I want to, What's another financial goal? I don't know, start a business, which kind of under work, but we'll just go there. I want to save up for a new lounge. So these are all our financial goals. Clearly the first goal is to get out of debt. Clearly the second goal should be to get an emergency fund. Okay, so I want you to just prioritize your goal. Then what I want you to do is write down, maybe get another page and write finances and write your first goal. Get out of debt. Health, walk 20 mins at least four days a week. Relationships, ha- and my number one priority is to be more open with my partner more often. Work, I wanna look at getting a pay rise. Uh, lifestyle, I wanna learn how to knit. So we've basically got five goals and I'm a big believer in not overcooking and having too many things in our plate. So what if out of those five goals, you selected one or two that you could just really start to plan for and hit the ground running? So finances, get out of debt. Well, I'll download the Glenn James spending plan. It's a free course. Um, I'll do my budget. I'll do my spending plan. Um, I will then have a system in place that will allow me to get out of debt as soon as possible. And it might also tick another goal of redoing my budget in 2024. So we can do that. The health one, walking 20 minutes, four days a week as a minimum, that might be an easy one that you can just, yeah, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to get up. I'm going to have my shoes and my exercise gear next to my bed So the first thing I do when I get up is put my shoes on and I'm committed to this. So that one might take care of itself in the background. The relationships one, I want to be closer and more committed to my partner. I'm going to set, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to set a heap of random calendar things in my own private calendar. And those reminders, I'm then when that calendar comes up once a fortnight, once a month, whatever, I'm going to send a text to my partner throughout the day and tell them how much I value them, love them, respect them and what's a good thing about them. I don't know, we just want to get things moving, but we also don't want to overwhelm. So we look at work, pay rise, new job and all that stuff. And then basically all you do is with your number one goal, we write down as many things as possible that we can do to achieve that goal. So if we go back to the financial goal, we've had the five goals down Uh, we've selected the number one priority. So we've prioritized our goal uh, and that would be to get out of debt. Then we're going to maybe get another page and put a financial goal, how to get out of debt. And we're going to write down as many things as possible that we can do to get out of debt. And then all we do is we maybe um, draw a line under that 
and break it up into four segments. So a, a vertical line, it's hard to speak about this, with little horizontal line, with little vertical things. So we've got four sections. They're the four quarters of the year. And then we can work backwards. So if you had $15,000 worth of debt, divided by, um, let's just go $15,000 divided by 52, uh, sorry, <clears throat> $15,000 divided by 52. So that's $288 a week, right? So then if we go $288 a week times 13 is 3749. So we'll just call it $4,000. How can I, in each quarter of the year, generate an extra $4,000? So you might write that down. Uh, it could be selling crap. Oh, I've got a $2,000 thing in the garage. I haven't used it for months. I'm selling that. I'm putting that towards the debt. Because guess what? You can buy another one later on down the track when you're out of debt, when you're saved up, it'll be a better model. You'll enjoy it more. And it's cash, paid with cash, no debt. So we've done that. We might sell stuff. We might ask about overtime. We might do side hustle. We might review our budget and spending, reduce luxuries, because our whole reason for living financially for this year is to achieve that number one goal. Then we do the same thing for health. So what I'm kind of doing is, uh, I've actually written down some other examples because all that stuff I was actually just <laughs> jiving. I forgot I made a point around um, some financial stuff, but let's look at the financial goal. You're out of debt. Now you want to do an emergency fund. So the goal is, and I want you to write this down, I would like to save a three-month emergency fund within 18 months or less. So we're going to write down as many things as possible. Number one, do a solid budget and a spending plan. We've got to get data on the table. Number two, work out the exact amount. So we used $15,000 for the debt. Same thing. Well, I need to try and save $4,000 a quarter, and I'm going to break that down. You might want to break it down to weekly. I wouldn't suggest breaking it down to anything more than three monthly slots because time goes fast, but you might do some type of system. I want you to then focus on the goal. I want you to then focus on the system and not the goal for the first little while. So all we're doing each pay cycle, each week, each month, we are just focusing on this new system. And that new system is we've got a good budget and spending plan, this new system that we're focusing on is my whole financial reason for living is to get an emergency fund. This new system is to get into sync, get into rhythm um, and do all that stuff. Because what basically what we've done, we've worked backwards and we're just being conservative. And that's why we just said, I would try and do $4,000 a quarter, not thirty-seven fifty or whatever it was. You may set up a spreadsheet or some other visual tracker. Do the old school thermometer on the fridge. I don't care. You need to be able to see it every single day. Then you just got to get to work. And remember, the only thing that can stop you is this. Drum roll. You are not serious enough and you don't have it front of mind each week or each month. Because remember, we're not focusing on the end goal, the effect. And the effect is that we want a three-month emergency fund within 18 months or less. We're focusing on the causes. And the only reason you're not going to be able to tick those causes off is because you're not serious enough about it and it's not front of mind. Health. And to be real, I've actually, if you've listened to this podcast for some time, I've always wanted to like get healthier, but I always start stuff and then like go away. My habits get out of sync and you know, I was really good with Pilates and all that. And then I get out of habit. And I honestly know in my own life, I can get results if I keep the habit and the behavior up. Maybe read the book Atomic Habits at the start of the year as well. We'll put a link in the show notes if you don't have it already. It will change your life if you let it. So the health goal that I put down, I would like to lose 10 kilos in 2024 as there are at least two areas of my overall health which will improve. So, and I've written down six things. One, work out a weekly target. So what I did, I actually because we need to be a little bit conservative sometimes because life gets in the way. I've just written down 10 kilos divided by 40. So 40 weeks, huge buffer there. That's 250 grams a week. 
Number two, move at least 20 minutes a day, at least four days per week. Again, can I get into the habit where I'm just going to go for a walk, 20 minutes, just even if it's 10 minutes, just get out and get moving because once you're out there, you'll stay out. Can I move 20 minutes a day for at least four days per week? Cut out all snacks at home and drink water only. I don't drink alcohol, so it's really easy for me. We've all got easy things in our life. We've all got struggles. Everyone's different. Everyone's human. I'm only going to weigh in weekly, maybe. And I'm going to get accountability. Can I find a friend that I can go on this journey with? And guess what? The only thing that can stop me is, drum roll, is I'm not serious enough about it and it's not front of mind each week, each month, each day. The only thing that can stop me is I'm, I've stopped focusing on the causes. All I need to focus on is the list of causes that I need to do. If I continue to tick off these causes, the effect will 100% happen. It's cause and effect. Is it Newton's or Einstein's law? All that stuff. Science. Science, baby. Hashtag, yeah. Here's another example. To get another job in the same industry or role with a pay rise of $15,000 and some flexible work arrangements as there is no further room for growth in my current company. I want to do this by October 2024. So I've written six things down. Define exactly what you want. Be very specific. You need to know exactly what you want. What does flexible work arrangements look like to you? Is that I only want to work at a company that has a four-day work week? I only want to work for a company that I can work from home? I only want to work for a company that will just be chill if I take the kids to the flippin' doctor's appointment at 3 p.m. one day and get home and finish my work in the afternoon without them freaking out. Be very clear with what you want. Number two, speak with other people in your industry. Get out, off your ass, off your seat, get out there. Make yourself needed. Try and be headhunted. Try and be something that someone else wants. Meet as many people in your industry as possible. Let the word out there that you are looking for change. You're awesome. And let other people do the work for you. They will speak. Number three, research salaries and roles. Make sure your goal is attainable and realistic. You want to move jobs to the same role in a different company? Well, is it realistic that you can get a 100 grand pay rise or is it realistic that you can get the 15 grand one? I want you to, in the first maybe three months, if you have a goal like this, speak to at least three recruiters. Just tell them, yep, I'm out here. This is what I'm after. Let them come to you. Good people are always looking for good people. Good companies are always looking for good people. Get your CV in order. That can be one thing that you did. One week, this week, I just want to work on my CV. That's all I care about. The next week, I'm just going to reach out to one recruiter, try and have a coffee meeting or a virtual catch up. I want you to focus on your strengths and not your weaknesses. Write down all your strengths. If you don't know what your strengths are, ask people in your team, ask your spouse, ask your partner, Ask your friends. If you want to know what you're good at, ask someone close to you in your life. Really simple. So some of these goal examples that I've read and what we've talked about, they do fit into the smart goal category. I personally do smart yo goals, S-M-A-R-T-Y-O. So specific, to get another job in the same industry with a pay rise of $15,000. That's specific measurable well that is measurable because i can actually one get that money when i get the new job two i can be very clear on exactly what i want and measure it against the flexible work situation that i'm after and what someone else can provide make it attainable is this actually attainable are you actually wanting a hundred grand extra when there's no company on the planet that's going to pay you that is it relevant? Is getting another job relevant to you and where you're at right now? And is it time bound? I put do this by October 2024. Now, when I add the yo to smart yo goals, the why is yours. 
you've got to make sure the goal is yours. You've got to make sure that you want this. You've got to make sure that you've got an emotional connection to that goal. There's no point planting a lemon tree because you're getting a guilt trip from your parents or in-laws that, well, your nan always had a lemon tree. So, you know, you're letting the family down if you don't plant a bloody lemon tree. No, I don't give a crap about a lemon tree. It's not my goal. I don't care. Oh, you better you better buy a house. You know, you got to do that. No, I want to travel. I want to rent somewhere and live my life and do some investing elsewhere. Don't give a crap about buying a house. They've got to be your goals. And the O, I think it's really important to have them in order. Sure, it is my goal to start investing. Sure, it is my goal to get out of debt. Sure, it is my goal to save and have an emergency fund. But the right order to do it is to get out of debt first, then to get an emergency fund, then to start investing. You've got to have smart yo goals. They've got to be smart, but they've got to be yours and they've got to be in order. So when you are brain dumping on paper and you've got all your goals, I want you to really think about some alternatives and detractors because life happens. What happens if I've got this goal of getting another job in the same industry with a pay rise of $15,000? Okay, well, let's look at some detractors here. Let's look at some things that might come up that would stop you from doing that. The first one could be recruit. You, you might speak to a recruiter and like, look, to be honest, it's a very cold market right now. No one's hiring those positions and that's a little bit unrealistic. But we think the way that the world's moving in another 12 months, absolutely, we reckon we can get you that type of money. So that's an example. So what you can do then is, well, I can't move, but can I work on myself and my current position? So you've just got to understand that we want to take good risks, but stuff can go on. What about if um, I want to lose 10 kilos in 2024? Well, what happens if I need more ankle surgery or I break my leg and I can't walk for three months? Life happens. Can I focus on other areas of my health if I can't walk four days that week? I want to save an emergency fund in 18 months or less. What if I have an emergency on the way of saving my emergency fund? <laughs> like you've got to keep focus. And that's why you've got to get the goals so deep in you that you are so focused that you know that there will be bumps along the way. And those bumps, they're not concrete walls, they're speed humps. And if you've got a spouse or partner, I think it's really important for you both to do this exercise, for you both to write down top goals in your financial life, in your relationship, in every area that you can think of, even in the areas of um, finances, health, relationships, work, lifestyle, both have your own goals, both have your own life, obviously. And then can we bring those together and compare and we look for things that we've both got on the same page? Oh, we've both written down in lifestyle that we want a new kitchen. Let's do that first because it's a win for both of us. We both want this. Then can we say, well, second in terms of financial goal, I really want a new car because I'm sick of this. I really want to save up and buy a, I don't know, premium sewing machine because I love sewing and that's $2,000 and I want to buy this new car. Okay, well, we've both got these individual goals. We're both adults. We're both mature. Let's both support each other and we choose one to do first. What's more urgent, the car or the sewing machine? We'll do the most urgent one first and we're both behind it. Or what do you think we can do sooner New sewing machine, sweet, it's $2,000. Let's just focus all our attention. We'll get you that sewing machine. It will give you the quality of life and all that sooner. Then as a family unit, our goal is to save for the new car. So I think it's important with your relationships and goals. We might have our own solo goals and then we might come together and do joint goals and we support each other. And it's your turn for your big goal. It's my turn for my big goal. And there's some joint goals. I don't know. I think the winner here is the communication. And then finally, what I want to do now is just open the Facebook group. And I hope this has just been a little bit encouraging for you because we're all human and we all need a reset. That's all we need to do. The old big reset. Okay, so I asked what's your number one goal? 
Ashley said, less stress and more family time. So if we look through all of this stuff, Ashley, I need you to write down what that actually looks like. Me being less stress is leaving work on time. And that could be, I've got to have a discussion with my employer to say, my role isn't working because I'm overworked. I'm not getting paid for this. I'm leaving at 6 p.m. each night. This can't happen in the new year. More family time, what does that look like? Does that look like some boundaries? Does that look like a joint calendar with your spouse or partner? What? So we need to make sure that these things that we want, they're goals and not wishes, and we need to use cause and effect. What causes can you choose to have the effect of less stress and more family time? Liz said, being able to afford unpaid nursing placement. Sidebar, I think unpaid work placement should be illegal or at least the state or the federal government pay for at least a minimum benefit while you're doing that. Anyway, that aside. So what does that look like? How are we going to unpack this so you can afford that? We're, we've got to write a list down. We've got to look how long is the unpaid placement for? How many hours a week will I be not working for money? And how much do I have to save to fill that hole? If you're in a relationship, can a partner work for a short period of time, a little bit of overtime. I don't know. Thomas said, save for a $15,000 car purchase, renew my lease for two years without a ridiculous rise in rent and survive. Okay, what does that look like? Beck said, upskill in my trade, slowly invest so I can not work so bloody hard. Beck, upskill your trade. Remember my comments about money won't solve all your problems. So you can invest, but you still need to work because you need that purpose. So again, I'd be focusing on the upskill my trade. Charlene said, cultivating thriving relationships. All right, what does that look like? Let's write down friends. Let's look, let's write down family. Let's write down, and I'm talking like uh, family as in not living with you. And then let's write down my lover, my, <laughs> my little bed buddy and all that stuff, right? So what does all that look like? Let's write it down. Phoebe, start a family, awesome. Kirsty said, laser eyes. All right, so that's a time commitment. We're gonna maybe need some time off work. It's a financial commitment. Let's write this down. Let's get a plan in place. Robbie said, fun. All right, your idea of fun is baking a cake twice a week. Mine might be riding a motorbike. You gotta write it down. What does fun look like to you? You might be able to implement that by writing a list down, prioritizing and doing it tomorrow without any big financial thing. It could be fun for me is going for a, a bushwalk once a week. All right, let's do that. Let's get clear on what we want. Karen said, be a saver and not a spender. Okay, what does that look like? How are you going to be a saver and not a spender? Vanessa, pay cash for our new caravan and then starting and then start saving again for a new car we'll purchase in 2025. Also wanting to increase our share portfolio. Awesome, pick one, nail it and move on. Put a plan in place. Dana, pay off my car loan I'm, so I'm out of consumer debt. How are we doing that? How much is left? What's the minimum we're paying? How much can we spare? And how much can we get this cleaned up ASAP? Jess said health. What does health mean to you? Write it down. Health to me means I'm sleeping well. Health to me means I'm doing eight hours a night. Health means I'm walking daily. Health means I'm gymming three times a week. Health means I'm having good relationship uh, discussions. What does health mean to you? Hannah said, not go backwards while on maternity leave. Awesome. What does backwards look like? And I know everyone's not getting heaps clear, but these are just real good examples where it's easy for us to think of the effect, but we need to go and then write the list of the causes because the, the cause list will always be longer than the effect. And finally, this is not manifesting. I believe manifesting is almost just wishing and there is a point where i'm manifesting a car park when i go to the shopping center oh i'm just manifesting that shut up it's rubbish <laughs> if you're so good at manifesting can you do me a favor and manifest some world peace like if you're actually that good at it <laughs> but if you're actually that good at manifesting can you manifest the homeless in your community to be housed and don't be so selfish about manifesting a freaking car park? This energy actually exists. Put it towards something that's good. However, the manifesting thing 
all jokes aside, what it actually does is it puts what you want at the forefront of your mind. So it's more of a focus thing. Call it what you want. I call it cause and effect. And I put a plan in place to get that thing. I have yet to see someone manifest a lotto win. It'd probably be called luck. And honestly, there's a book called Success and Luck by Thomas Thomas Frank. I think we'll put the link in the show notes. He's a Cornell professor. Awesome book. And it's that dance between success and luck. Hard work and right place, right time. So call it what you want, but please don't go around saying you've got a magic power. If I think about something long enough, it happens. It's only happening because it's at the front of mind, which isn't a bad thing. Um, But if you do have those magical powers, if you can just help out with some world peace right now, if you can help out with some poverty right now, that would be awesome. Don't be selfish. Um, (laughs) and, And I'm saying this at the end because there's probably less people to listen and be outraged with my vibe. But yeah, look, half joking, um, you know what? Hopefully you know, if you've known me long enough, what I'm trying to say, put a plan in place and don't wish. And maybe that whole manifesting thing, I don't like the whole wish side of it. I'm just walking around wishing for this, wishing for this. Oh, it happened. Yeah, well, it was just luck that there was a car park right at the door at the shops. I hope that's been awesome. I've been really encouraged myself. I jumped on for a 35 minute discussion and here we are now. But what do you want your year to look like? And more importantly, what don't you want your year to look like? Thanks so much for listening. If you've got value out of this episode, please forward it to a friend. Let them know that it's not called My Millennial Money as of next month. So it is for everyone. Please be encouraged. Please share your wins in the Facebook group. And I'm looking forward to having a cracking year with everyone. Stay safe. It is the holiday season, 2nd of January, as of this episode being released. Uh, Make sure you invite someone out for coffee. Make sure you invite someone out for dinner. It can be a real lonely time uh, in the holiday season for a lot of people. So, um, yeah, just look out for those less fortunate, uh, particularly in an emotional and lonely way. Uh, But, yeah, I'll see you soon. My name's Glenn James. Bye.